everybody's asking me to tie this fly, um, the tying instructions, so I'll just go ahead and show you. There's not a lot of materials. Some light cartel thread, uh, Pell Unimiler, a bit of red holographic, and some well marked mallard. So the first thing I do is I come in and I create a little bed of tying thread, basically where my thorax should be, and then come back up to the eye. Take a well marked section of the mallard feather, about quarter of an inch, and I'm looking for a little bit longer than the body length, probably about there. That's my tying in point, my pinching loop. And then winding down, come in with your scissors at an angle. It's got to be your thorax, keeps everything nice and smooth. Winding down the hook shank. I want to leave myself a little bit of space because I need to secure the mallard um, later. I do this in stages, this particular fly. So that's that's that bit. Let's, let's see if I've got enough mylar here. Oh, yeah, I probably have. So just catch my mylar in. I'm winding down the body. Again, leave myself a little bit of space, my tying in point. And I stick a little bit of varnish. Just gives the the mylar something to adhere to. Bring my thread back up, park it at the thorax, and then I'm going to come over and overlap in turns. So every turn of the mylar overlaps the previous and just secure. Bring the scissors and trim that. I should have enough. I have I've got enough red holographic here, so in with the red holographic. Now you can make this hot spot trigger whatever you want, as long or as short as you want. I do usually the same as what I would do with buzzer patterns or midge patterns. So again, coming up in overlapping turns, I get a couple of layers in there. And then secure behind the eye. So, and at this point, I tie off, tie off the fly. This is really the only. This particular bit's the the fiddly bit. So, I'm going to hold my thread and come back on it so it locks it in place and you'll see I've got a tiny bed there on which to tie on. Tiny little bit and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my, my fibers back and lock them in place to create the back of the pin fry. So. Make sure it's nice and even. And all I want is four turns here like that, and then a whip finish. Keep everything tight. That thread just pulled off there, saved me snapping it. So the next bit is I come in at the eye, again coming over my thread, and I'm going to create a head here, um, which you're going to varnish up, and then once you've got that head there, that allows us to create the eye. So I need contrasting colours, hence the right car hell. So we'll get quite a head on it, like so. Make sure I'm a little bit free bit on the thread there. So you can see there, we've got a nice pronounced little head. I've also got a few strands, let me just take these away. I've fiddly bit frayed my thread. That's better. And then, whip finish. You need, a, you need a decent sized head in it to get the eye on. And then we just varnish the head of the fly and also where we did the knot at the bottom. So we varnish the head, 
Okay, get a good bit of varnish on there because it's got to soak in before you get the, the black eye on and then come under the fly and a little bit here especially where you've done your, your whip finish. Just making sure that's well covered. And then we'll come back when that's dry and we'll do the, the eye. So now that's dried a little bit, I've got some um, black varnish. That's all it is, just black varnish. And I've got this cocktail stick. All I do is I put a bit of foam in it, so it makes it a little bit easier for me to hold. And I'm going to turn the fly here, so just a little split of varnish for the eye. that side and then one on that side and that is your little pin fry pattern now you can when that eyes dried a little bit um, stick another coat of varnish in it just for durability but a great fly when there's juvenile coarse fish on the go. Uh, the fish can be really, really tricky. I fish this like I would nymphs, um, straight lining. I'd also fish it on the washing line. It's not a pulling fly, it's more like a static presentation fly, if that makes sense, but it certainly works. I've also got a version where I tie the whole fly similar to this and I have CDC at the top and I use that one as a static pattern over the top of weed beds. Um, another great fly as well. So. I really hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. Plenty more fly fishing and fly time videos. Take care, folks, and bye-bye.